three concepts. That's one of the reasons why this passage is so confusing to us, because it's this interplay of wind and spirit and breath. It's all, it's all interchanged, but Jesus is saying flesh gives birth to flesh. Earth gives birth to earth. Dirt gives birth to dirt, but the breath of God gives birth to the spirit. The spirit gives birth to spirit. As I was thinking about this, I was reminded of a number of people that I've met where I've talked to them about their spiritual journey. And every single person I ever talk to will tell me things like this. Yeah, I'm a spiritual person. Yeah, I believe in God. I'll even ask them a question, do you know God? And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I know God. But Jesus says, flesh only gives birth to flesh. There's got to be some type of spiritual birth that happens, a moment when, when it turns on. And if that moment never comes, then the spiritual birth has never happened, then the spirit is never alive. In fact, the phrase to write down for this one is simply this, that without a spiritual birth, there is no spiritual life. It's not that you've got a soul that just needs to grow up. It's not that you've got a spirit inside you that just doesn't know enough. It's not that you've, you're morally good as, and you're a morally good person and your soul just needs to get better. It's that Jesus says if you haven't had spiritual birth, you've got no spiritual life. Nicodemus is just boggled by this, and so he asks another question. He says, okay, how can this be? Notice he's asked two how questions, and Jesus hasn't given him a how answer. He's not going to give him another one here. Here's Jesus giving him a why answer right here. Look at this. He says, how can this be? Verse 10, Jesus says, you are Israel's teacher. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. And we testify to what we've seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. See, Jesus is saying here that you need him to turn on this light because he came from heaven and we didn't. He came from a new perspective. He came from a different place. He came from a new understanding of life and we didn't. I like the fact that Jesus always says things to people that are too abrupt and too offensive and too confusing. I mean, someone comes up to Jesus asking for a little bit of information and Jesus just spews out things that confuse him. A guy says, what do I have to do to reach eternal life? And Jesus says, go ahead and sell everything you own and give it to the poor and then walk after me. It's like, wait a minute, what? How, how does selling stuff that, well, we're going to come to that in a couple weeks. But here, Jesus says, you've got to be born again. It's, he's saying things that intentionally confuse spirit and wind and water and all this stuff. He's saying things that intentionally confuse because, listen, Jesus doesn't want to just hand you some information and walk away. He wants to give you a taste of something bigger than you can fully understand so that your only solution is to follow him. Your only solution is to hang out with him. He's not looking for information transfer. He's looking for relationship. So Nicodemus comes looking for information and Jesus shakes his world and says, I'm just going to give you relationship. I'm going to tell you something that you have to keep coming back. You get more of this. But Jesus has inside knowledge that we don't have. So jot this down. Without knowledge from Jesus... You don't understand. Without knowledge from Jesus, you don't understand. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. If you want to know anything about the kingdom of God, you have to talk to the person who came from there. There is a glass ceiling between what you can possibly know and what God is and what he has. There's a dividing line. And the only way for us to ever get a glimpse of what's going on up there is for someone up there to come down here and to tell us. So if you want a relationship with God, you have 
To be born again, you have to have a relationship with the person who came from God. It's got to be that moment in your life where it all begins. When was that for you? Just a, little, a couple more verses here. Look at verse 14 and 15. Jesus closes this out. Now, in verse 16, the quotation be, continues in many Bible translations, but it's very likely that verse 16 begins sort of John's commentary on what Jesus says, and so we're not going to go past 15, but if you look at 15, these are Jesus' last words to Nicodemus. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone be who believes in him may have eternal life. And finally, Jesus gives us a how. All, on, all along, he's given us why. Why? Because you don't know without Jesus. Why? Because you don't have life unless Jesus gives you life. But now we get a how, and he uses this word, belief. Belief. Write this down. You are born when you believe. You are born when you believe. But what Jesus does here is he draws Nicodemus' attention to a story in the Old, Old Testament. So you know the story of the people of Israel obeying God and then failing to obey God and then God punishing and then God sending a Savior. And then they obey and then they disobey and then God punishes and then he sends a Savior. And then they obey and then they, they disobey and then God punishes them and then they start obeying again and he sends a Savior. And in every one of those stories the Pharisees were thinking of, the people start obeying and then the Savior comes. But Jesus goes farther back. He goes to a story in the Old Testament where the people had been disobeying. And Moses is there and they're complaining against him and his leadership. And so God sends poisonous snakes into the camp. To punish the people and these snakes are coming into the camp and they're biting the people and people are dying left and right it's this plague of snakes people are dying left and right and the people are wailing out and they're crying and they're saying God save us save us and then God says to Moses okay do this thing take a snake make a snake out of bronze put it on a stick a cross beam kind of stick and put it in the ground so that everybody who looks at the thing hanging on the cross will be saved and then what happens is the people as they've been bitten they look at the thing hanging on the cross and then they are healed there's no behavior required there's no get better required there's just look at the thing hanging on the cross that's what Jesus points Nicodemus to. He says there's a moment where the people were facing God's wrath and they just needed to look at the cross and they'd be healed. So then Jesus says, anyone who believes in me, 